Hey guys, today I'm going to do a quick run through of the Atari 5200 S video and composite video uh, mod. Uh, I've never actually done one of these for a customer. Um, I've bought uh, in the past, I've only ever bought one 5200 system and then I resold it after I modded it. And then I have uh, my own personal 5200 system, which is also modded. But uh, amazingly, I've never done one for a customer, so that's something of note for me, I, I suppose. Anyways, uh, I don't want to get into the details too much. I just want to show you uh, me installing the mod and uh, how I go about doing it. And that's pretty much it. So with all that being said, uh, let's jump in. Let's go ahead and take the system apart and uh, go about installing the mod board. All right, with the system open and the board exposed, uh, I'm going to uh, remove the RF shielding. The RF shielding is held in place with little tabs that bend, which was pretty pretty poor design by Atari, in my opinion, but it is what it is. So just bend up the tabs, and uh, you'll be able to remove the RF shield. All right, with the board removed from the case, you'll n n notice on here, if I zoom in, that literally every single chip is on sockets, which, believe it or not, is actually a good thing for us. Um, I believe the reason why they're all on sockets is because, uh, well, for instance, the manufacturer data is right here on top of the RF modulator. Uh, and this says 83, which was the same year they discovered uh, electrostatic d discharge on uh, electrical devices, which may have something to do with the reason why all these are socketed. Just theory that runs through my mind uh, when I do a lot of these. A anyways, um, the mod itself is incredibly simple. Uh, I'm using... Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, who who designed this mod board. Uh, however, I know this uses the low bu budget schematic. Um, anyways, I use the, the, this board because it's what electronics sentimentality sells. So, um, and with this board, it's pretty simple. Um, all we're gonna do is. Um, well, I'll show you. So what we're gonna do is, um, if the board is facing, uh, or the the controller ports are facing you, the the GTA uh, chip, which is the video uh, processor and encoding chip, can be found in the lower right hand corner. Um, it is a 40 pin chip, and all you're gonna do is, um, since mine is already socketed, I'm just going to pull it out of its socket. Not like that. 
And that actually bent one of my uh, chip puller prongs, so I guess that's why it came undone. Anyways, yeah, just remove, and why is this so hard? Just remove this from its socket. At least that's how I do it. Now I have the GTA removed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift pins uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And uh, as well as uh, pin 31. Alright, at the GT I pulled out, I'm simply going to take a small screwdriver. You can use whatever as long as you're careful to bend up pins 21, 22, 23. And it just occurred to me that my hand's in the way. There we go. I'm actually going to take the board and the chip and place these in the correct order uh, for the way they go in and then I'm just going to bend them upwards. The board will hit the other legs of the chip but um, it's okay. It shouldn't jump anything if you do it right. And uh, um, then we'll just solder the chip directly to the board, uh, and it will look like this. So with those pins bent up, I'm going to take the chip oop, and seat it back inside of the socket. <laughs> Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flux uh, pen and I'm going to put flux the end of pen 32, excuse me, 31, and I'm actually going to add flux on all of those pins. There we go. Uh, however, um, we're going to do something with pin 31 first. Gonna add some solder. And then I'm gonna take a wire. And just thinking to myself how long it has to be. Um, let's make it, oops, didn't mean to hit my camera. Uh, let's make it about four inches long. Now you're going to take that piece of wire that you cut out and uh, you're going to want to tin the end of it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take that wire and you're going to solder it to pin 31. There we go, make sure it's solid, and it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the board, and we're going to stick it down, or excuse me, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this wire and solder it to the underside of pin 30, uh, of where pin 31 gets soldered on this board. Alright, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the board and stick it right down on top of the pins that we lifted for uh, uh, on the chip. There we go. Next, I'm just going to solder each of those pins to the board. There we go. Now the board is soldered to the chip. 
Um, however, it is a bit insecure, which is why we're going to do something special. Now, uh, the only thing that's keeping the board up right now uh, is the soldered pins, which is not a great thing um, because these can bend uh, because of the weight of the board and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to countersink the weight of the board using uh, some hot glue. And uh, I like using hot glue for this purpose because what you're going to do is you're going to take an actual stick of hot glue. You're going to cut it about the same length, a little bit higher, but the same length as uh, the board's height. Uh, and then we're going to use this piece of uh, glue to actually countersink the end of the board. So uh, now I have this tiny bit of glue, this glue uh, stick, whoa, 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 whatever you want to call it, um, and I'm going to heat up each end, and that can be done with a lighter uh, air, uh, hot air gun, whatnot, and uh, you're going to want to heat up both sides so it sticks to the underside of the uh, board, and then the top of the, or, yeah, you you get what I'm trying to say, uh, and then this will hold up the, uh, the board. So, for some reason, I have no means of creating fire right now, which is pretty funny, if you think about it. So, I'm going to use my soldering iron to heat up this glue stick, which is really dumb, and, um, I would never do this in any other situation, but I have no choice, so I'm going to heat that up with my soldering iron, stick it to the... So, with whatever I was just talking about done, uh, we're going to now with the board installed on the chip, we're going to uh, grab our positive 5 volt volts and ground c c c connection from the board. So I'm just going to tin these vias. And then um, right here is a location that says C C46. So that would be indicating capacitor 46, which is actually not even on this board. However, I get a 5 volt uh, output right there, and I have a ground connection right here. So I'm going to use those uh, as my 5 volts and ground connection. And uh, we'll just go ahead and solder some wires to those quickly. So, there we go. We have wired solder to positive and ground. And uh, it occurred to me, as I was uh, uh, soldering this, that I would likely speed up the video. So, I'll say what I said in the middle of it um, now, and that is... I soldered the wires on there and then took them off because uh, I hadn't twisted them and so the ends were fraying. I, 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 I actually should have tinned the wires before I put them on here, but um, it works so it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't do enough of these in order for me to develop a standardized way of doing 5200 video mods. Um, so with that being said, you can grab ground and 5 volts from pr 
pretty much anywhere you want to on on the board and it's likely that I will never ever have um, it's likely that no 5200 that I mod will ever be exactly the same um, it all depends on what's there and what's not there um, where I can grab 5 volts, where I can grab ground, and what the special circumstances with that system are. Um, since, it was, since there was no cap here, and uh, you may have seen earlier in the video that there were tons of places uh, 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 underneath this board for uh, logic chips, capacitors, resistors, stuff like that, but uh, they weren't filled in. Uh, I'm not sure if it's that way on every system, but I imagine it's not. Every 5200 I have ever seen has been di different. Um, none of that is really important, but it's just something to note. Um, next, um, next we're going to hook up Y or or excuse me, Luma, Chroma, and Composite Video um, on each of these pads. The one directly underneath the uh, the label is where the output is the rest of these are ground um, and now I'm gonna have to give some thought to where I'm going to mount the S video and composite RCA jacks in the system